Hi, it's Kim from Affordably Crafty. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Kim, and my channel is all about learning how to stretch your craft dollar and be affordably crafty. Please like, share, and subscribe so your friends can learn how to be affordably crafty too. So I am going to be reading the next couple chapters in the Mary Frances um, Knitting and Crochet book. I will link down below the playlist that I created for this book. Um, it's actually pretty fun. It's based around the perspective of a little girl, and this is from the 1900s, early. Um, I would consider this an antique crochet and knitting book. Um, so right now we're going to be starting chapter three. Crochet Talks, and it's spelled C-R-O-W-S-H-A-Y. I love that. Oh dear, sighed Mary Frances. Oh dear, how I wish there were crocheting and knitting people. Like the kitchen people and the thimble people. Only that would be too good to be true. Not at all, not at all. Untie the bag and see us all. Came a voice from the knitting bag, which was beside Mary Frances in the swing, just where Aunt Maria had laid it. She picked it up and un untied the drawstrings and up popped crochet. The bright sunlight made him blink as he looked around. Good day, good day to you we say, yarn baby, woolly ball, and I crochet, sang the little fellow as Mary Frances lifted them out. Oh, can you all talk, she asked in delight. Can they crochet? Can they crochet, repeated crochet. Can they crochet? Why, I don't think they can. They can only help. Crochet hooks are the only ones who really can crochet. Oh, I see, said Mary Frances, even though she did not understand exactly what he meant. By the time the yarn baby's hair was standing on end, she looked so wild that Mary Frances pretended to be frightened and began to move away. Do not be alarmed, Miss Mary Frances, said the yarn baby, trying to smooth down her hair. My hair always stands out that way when I get excited. I was uh, afraid someone might overhear crochet talking, and then all our lovely plans would be spoiled. Crochet always talks too much anyhow. You might think that he was appointed to take charge of the lessons instead of me. Oh, said Mary Frances, I know what you wish to do. You want to give me secret lessons in crochet and knitting, just as the kitchen people gave me lessons in cooking, and the thimble people gave me lessons in sewing. I'll put you all back in the bag and carry you upstairs this minute, and I do hope that you'll begin the lessons right away. Chapter 4, Wooly Ball Tells Some Yarns. Ho, 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 ho. Mary Frances opened the bag on the sewing table. Is this the whole family, she asked, as she lifted the yarn baby, woolly ball, and crochet out. Oh, no, indeed, oh, no, indeed. Well, to the rest of us, wait till the rest of us you've seed, spoke up crochet. Up flew the yarn baby's hair. See, indeed, see, indeed. Do be more polite, crochet, she exclaimed. Use correct grammar and give someone else a chance to speak. Then she explained to Mary Frances about the large family of crocheting and knitting people who were so anxious to help her. Oh, I can't wait to begin, cried the delighted little girl. What do I do first? First you will a slip knot make, then in your right hand me, you'll take, began crochet. Now, now, exclaimed the yarn baby, there you go again. Oh, he loves to crow, said Wooly Ball, laughing. Ha, 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 ha. You mean that I love to crochet, Wooly Ball? Crochet turned, turned, woolly, turned toward Wooly Ball. Well, I think that Wooly, Wooly Ball means that you love to crochet so much that when you get a chance, you love to crow about it, said the yarn baby. You do not want to give anyone else a chance to talk? Now the very first person to explain lessons in crochet and knitting is... Wooly Ball. Because she can tell so many yarns, he <laughs> giggled Crochet. Wooly Ball looked up at Mary Frances with a broad smile. Do not mind him, she said. If you are quite, qu 
quite ready, we'll have a little talk about different yarns. There are many different weights and sizes of woolen yarns. We shall need to know about only a few of these. All yarns are made of twisted strands of thread. The weight depends upon the number and size of the strands that are twisted together. If two strands are twisted together, the yarn is twofold. If three strands are twisted together, the yarn is threefold. If four strands are twisted together, the yarn is fourfold. If you are uncertain of the fold of the yarn you have, untwist a little piece and count the strands. Names of yarns. Germantown Zephyr or Germantown Wool, a soft woolly yarn, very much used where warmth is needed. Germantown Wool comes in fourfold and eightfold weights. Fourfold is the weight generally used. The eightfold is too thick and heavy for most purposes. Knitting worsted is somewhat like Germantown wool in weight, but is rather harsh to the touch because the threads are made of long twisted fibers of wool. Knitted garments, I'm sorry, garments made of knitting worsted will stand hard to wear in usage. Saxony wool, a soft yarn made of lightweight strands, comes in twofold, threefold, and fourfold weights. The fourfold and twofold are the weights most used. Saxony wool is much used for making garments for babies. Woolen knitting floss. A lightweight, loosely twisted yarn comes in single and double strands. Teasel yarn or teasel wool resembles knitting floss, but is rougher and harsher to the finish. It is more often used for trimming than for making garments. Angora wool is a hairy yarn used for trimming. It is made entirely of the soft, silky hair of the angora goat, or a mixture of wool and angora hair. It is so expensive that teasel yarn is m much used in its stead. After the trimming is made, the teasel yarn is usually brushed until it is quite furry and fuzzy. There are many different makes of yarns. Each, each firm manufactures a variety of yarns under fancy names. All manufacturers, however, make Germantown wool, knitting worsted, Saxony wools, woolen flosses, and teasel wool. Chapter 4. Speaking of moths, there, exclaimed Crochet as Wooly Ball finished. There, has Wooly Ball long yarns to spin? Mary Frances laughed. You little chatterbox, she said. I really believe that you are jealous. I certainly do love to talk, said Crochet, but I admit, I can't tell about yarns the way Wooly Ball can. Here the yarn baby interrupted. If you will bring your chest of yarns, little miss, she said, we will soon see if you have all those different kinds of yarns. Mary Frances went to the closet and brought the chest to the sewing table. As she pulled out the bright colored yarns, some small white balls fell to the table. Oh, goody, said, exclaimed Wooly Ball. I see that you are not going to let the moths get eat up your treasures. Moths hate camphor and moth balls. I just love them. Oh, I know about moths, said Mary Frances. I learned a sad lesson about them. Once my aunt knit my doll a little. Oh, did you say knit? Did you say knit? Came another little voice. Who was that? Asked Mary Frances. Oh, that's only Knit and Knack, the knitting twins, answered Crochet. He turned toward the table where they lay. You two go to sleep again. It's not your turn yet. By the time the yarn baby looked like a porcupine, her hair stood out so straight and stiff that Mary Frances was almost afraid to speak. He will keep on until we have to be punished, whispered Wooly Ball. Yes, said the yarn baby. If he doesn't stop crowing so much, I will not let him crochet. That seemed to scare Crochet terribly. And he did not other, utter another sound, but listened with all his ears. You were speaking of moths, Wooly Ball, reminded Mary Frances. Oh, yes, about the little coat which my mom made for my Angie, my doll. I used it all winter, and in the summer I folded it away and put it in a little box. 
When the weather was cold again and Angie needed it, I took it out of the box, and what do you think happened? I know, declared Wooly Ball. I know what happened. The little colt fell to pieces when you picked it up. The moss had bitten it all over. <gasps> this is exactly what happened, said Mary Frances. It taught me never to put anything made of wool without camphor or mothballs. Oh, no. I'm going to be reading some more out of this in the coming um, days. So if you like this and you really enjoy these vintage or antique crochet stories, please comment down below. Like, share, and subscribe so your friends can be affordably crafty too. Have a creative day, everyone. Bye.